We bought this product on Amazon. It's a basketball themed party game where you try tossing as many balls as you can into your partner's basket. And while it's a really great product, it's just not getting as many sales as it should be. And the reason why is because the listing sucks. All right, welcome back to another episode of Amazon Revamp. Today, next to me, I have... Good day, mate, it's Lenny. How are you? <laughs> I'm clearly not Lenny, I'm filling in for him today. I'm mm -hmm. John Aspinall with PickFu, splashing down here in Austin, Texas with the, the wonderful Jungle Scout crew to help fix some listings. Let's do it. Yeah. All right, well, today we have this listing right in front of us, John, and you know, you're an expert, but I wanna start here with what you think is going wrong with the probably the most important part of the listing, their images. Yeah, I mean, right off the bat, we're looking at something that I don't know what it is. Mm. Like, if I'm searching for it, yes, I'll understand what it is, but it's not having a clear CTR word in the background to show what it is, how to use it, who it's intended for. Mm. Clearly, I see there's three of them here, but I don't know how many balls are included. I don't know where I'm putting it. I don't know how I'm wearing it, anything like that. Now I know mm. after I clicked on the listing, I know a little bit more about it. It's going on the head. They're throwing balls in the air like crazy. Um, or you could throw balls on your head by yourself or throw them on your friend's head or something like that. <laughs> but there's a lot of missed opportunities over here to talk about the value prop, who mm. it's for, writing exactly what it what it's doing, how it's doing it. Product details, not a lot of details here. Mm -mm. Uh, it's really just showing me a couple of bands and a couple of uh, nets over here. So it definitely leaves me wanting to know more. What ages, can I use it? Can you use it? Can my kids use it? Um, and where can I use it? Is it good for yeah. the beach, the pool, the, the grass? Australia, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Well, John, it's worth noting, I mean, we'll see it here in a moment, but this entire niche, there's maybe like 20 or 30 different listings that have this product or 20 different sellers. They're all using these Photoshopped images. So like, if you were to come in right away into this niche, which we're not recommending, this, is, this isn't a product research video, but if you just use real lifestyle photography, just that away, I think is gonna make your listing stand out from what's already on here. Yeah, I mean, right off the bat, and I know we have it around here somewhere. Where's that bag? Where The packaging? The packaging. Yeah. Like, this is out of the box that it came in, but inside, no, where's the bag? Did, Lenny, did we throw it out? Oh yeah, it's just, it, yeah, it's in the trash. It's a, it's, that's it, where it belongs. It comes, no, 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 I wanna, thank you. So, oh, it's, wet. it's, well, that's not good. Let me shake that <laughs> off. So I'll pull Lenny with that. So it came inside the, uh, just a poly bag. It really is wet. It came, it didn't come wet. It came inside a plastic poly bag and that's okay. But the thing is, you don't wanna showcase that in the behind your hero image. Mm because it's not really doing anything. But something like this, it's not a giftable item per se. It's not like it's a Father's Day gift or jewelry or anything like that. So you can do a post edit and mm. put some packaging behind, very simple, but gives you room to put exactly what it is. A basketball hoop, head game, show the ages, all that kind of cool stuff. Yeah. Well, you know, John, I like where we're at right now. We're talking about the images and the second half of this listing that we would want to optimize if this was our product would be the copy, the title, the bullet points, the description, the back end search terms as well. This is very clearly an SEO game that you're going to be playing with, with this product. And that's because, as you'll see here in a second, um, looking at the keyword search volume for these types of products, people aren't looking for this product. So if you were to type in head hoop basketball party game, over on Amazon. Let's see what we get here and just see what type of products show up. It looks like at the top here, we have two sponsored products that look just like ours. This one product over here, but if I take a larger scroll down, there's not that many ASINs like this that exist. And so people are looking probably, and we'll verify this in a moment, for broader terms like yard games, birthday party games, basketball themed games. And so with that being said, I do think what's gonna be most important with this listing outside of SEO is optimizing the conversion or the traffic that you do get. So nice. getting more people to click into your to your listing through the main image and getting more people to convert and realize that this is a game that they should buy next time they have a birthday party um, or some other event. So let's actually stick on the images here first and then at the second half of this video, we'll do a little bit of SEO yeah. analysis here. So- Well, as you wanna say real quick, like you typed in head hoop basketball game. Yeah. I would never Never type in a head hoop basketball right. game because I would not even know that head hoop was a. Th Did you know about head hoop not before this all. product? Right. Nope. So I think it's important to understand how the customer is going to be using the product. Yeah. Um, so if it's a beach game, is it a you know a lawn game, a party game, a pool game, stuff like that? Understand, and we're going to take a look at that in a little bit about yeah. where those search terms are coming from and exactly what people are looking for to 
optimize the listing in the SEO. Yeah, and that's actually do that real quick. So if within Jungle Scout, we can cook up here on the extension to run a reverse ASIN search, which is gonna take this ASIN, plug it into our Keyword Scout tool, and show us all the keywords that people are searching to find this type of product. And right away here, I see 223 keywords come back. And at the top, yeah, we're seeing broad searches like field day games, carnival games, which, you know, I did notice that was one of their main keywords they put up here, carnival doesn't look like they have field game or field day. So that's actually one that I would put right away just in the title and other places in the listing. But one good thing real quick is that, you know, 223 keywords sucks. Yeah. Um, that's not a lot at all. Um, typically, where do you see like is a sweet spot for like, mm. okay, this is a, a decent amount or like you are not ranking for a lot at all. We haven't used any filters to narrow down uh. search volume or anything else that helps us find the relevant keywords. Um, but I would say over a thousand is what you'd want to aim for. But in terms of what can actually go in your listing, you're maybe looking at 50 unique keywords at max, I would say. And so that's actually the next step. That's like, let's find more keywords because we're just looking at our product here. And if you're selling a product or you're about to sell a product, the odds are you're not the category leader. And so you don't have all the keywords that the category leader does have. And so I already did this, but what I would recommend doing is finding the most relevant keyword here that's gonna yield you back a search results of your similar products. And like I mentioned earlier, this is a crazy product where if I were to type in Field Day Games, we're not gonna see our exact competitors here. Although these are our competitors in some sense, because this is a product that people are searching for at a very high level. Is that rope? This is rope. We're just selling rope? We're competing with ropes on Amazon. For anyone out there watching this, if you think you if you don't think you can make it on Amazon with selling, there's people out there selling rope and make how, were they making sales on rope? Uh, let's see here. Oh yeah, only um, 1,800 units a month and 37,000 a month rope. revenue. Yeah. The next million dollar case study, rope. Um, so <laughs> what I would do at this point is use your best intuition. In my case, what I just did is copied in that head hoop basketball party game and that did work. And I typed it on Amazon here, found a couple products right away, they are sponsored, and then some organic products as well. I was able to get a list of at least 10 different ASINs. And then I plug that back into Keyword Scout. And what that will do is, yeah, it'll give us a way bigger list. So right here, we can see 700 keywords, which is way more than what it was like 200, I think, yeah. with just our ASIN. John, now what I wanna do is I wanna figure out which keywords that we should really be prioritizing because there's too many keywords here to prioritize. And the best way that I like to do this is use some advanced filters within Keyword Scout to narrow that down. What I'm gonna use is the organic ASINs count, and I'm gonna put two as the minimum. What that's gonna do is it's gonna show me only keywords where at least two of these competitors are ranking organically in the top 100. And if I click apply here, that's gonna give us a much smaller list of relevant keywords, which yeah, brings us down to 113 and we still have field day games, cool, as the number two keyword in terms of search volume. And so with this list, I would go back into our listing, like I mentioned earlier, field day games is not in the title. If I do a command and look field day, it's nowhere. Field is actually nowhere in here. It's mentioned twice, but it's probably hidden in the back end or on a competitor's title. And so that's a quick optimization we can make just to the listing itself, which will help us organically index and then hopefully eventually rank on Amazon for field day games. All of these keywords in here. Wait, there was one over here that says limbo game. Limbo game for kids. That's not really relevant. No, and so that's one that you can d just manually uncheck if you don't think it's it's relevant. Yeah, don't put a limbo. This is not a limbo. O although when you were doing it before, yeah. you could have limboed with it and not let the balls pop. Up. Probably not what it's meant to be, but we'll I will show say... you how to play this game in just a little bit. Yeah. So stay tuned for <laughs> for us actually playing this game. That's a good one. So you could click the the Amazon icon here to see if there's any product like yours on here. I guarantee you. If I did, you see one? Uh, rope. <laughs> $48,000 a month in revenue. Okay, we're, we're doing the wrong product. But one, one thing I kind of want to show here is in Keyword Scout, we have some helpful columns. I disabled a lot of them just to show some important ones that I wanted to call out. So let's look at Limbo Games right here. Got 9,000 monthly searches. Our organic rank is outside the top 100. And just for reference, whatever ASIN you highlight, I can click into each one of these, is showing your ASIN. And then when you see average competitor organic rank, average competitor sponsored rank, those are gonna be your competitors that aren't highlighted. And so what this is- that's, Sorry, that's yeah. actually kind of interesting though, because yeah. we were like, oh, maybe limbo might work, might not work. 
and we're outside the hundred, but average competitor is or inside. So that's interesting, yeah. right? Like I automatically thought like that's not going to work, but maybe it will. Yeah, and there's at least two competitors ranking with organically. It looks like yeah for that term. So that's a relevant keyword. Even though it's not like hyper relevant to the actual product, it's relevant enough that people are searching for limbo games and they stumble their way into this game for their kids or for them as well. Maybe it's a drinking game. Yeah, anyway, look at that's a cool like Spanish keyword that you'd probably want to put in on your back end. Say that word. Hmm. Pass. <laughs> <laughs> but this is what we're doing. We're trying to find a list of keywords that we should one include in our listing that isn't already there, like field day games or limbo games, apparently. But two, actually creating a list of keywords that we would advertise against. Because if we're ranking organically or our competitors are ranking organically, what would happen if we threw some ads out there? In fact, none of these competitors, which you can see in these last two columns here, are doing any type of advertising. Like, there's no competitor here that's organically ranking for keywords that thought it was a good idea to actually advertise on those keywords, even though they're getting sales organically from it. Right away, I think that's how this ASIN can go from an estimated almost 300 monthly units sold to at least 400. They can double that, almost double that by just upping their keywords in their advertising strategy. So we can go ahead and save this list. That's what I would recommend doing. Save this list into Keyword Scout. Name it whatever you want just to keep it as a master list. And then from there, segment it down. So what I mean by that is like events. I would probably have a segmented list of type of events that people can use this for. So birthday parties, I see birthday games are, are in there. Field day is another type of event. And I have like a segmented list of events. The next one would maybe be based on who the audience member is. So I see kid party games here. I'd have a list of kid keywords. And then here, here's one, adult. I'd have a list of adult keywords. And the reason I'm segmenting is because you will figure out over time who your primary target audience is. Certain segments are gonna have higher A costs. Certain segments are gonna have more spend behind them. So for me, I like to create more levers in advertising by having a really strict segmented list of keywords that I launch in separate campaigns rather than just one campaign with all these keywords in it. But now let's get to like what's gonna really help our advertising lift off. And that's the main image, which is gonna get people to actually click our ad. And then let's talk about the other images that we can do to get them to actually convert once we bring them in. Yeah, it's like the, the old quote from um, Abraham Lincoln, are you, it, mm. it, it all starts with the click. Oh yeah, 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 he said that. That was Abraham Lincoln, yeah. it was Da Vinci, it was Michelangelo, yeah. Nikola Tesla. You tweeted it, I thought, yeah. John Aspinall. Yeah. But yeah, no, so there's lots of things that you can do. So something that we're doing here. What so, is PickFu, by the way? What is PickFu? Well, if you don't know what PickFu is, you're a very silly goose. I'm <laughs> just kidding, keep watching. So PickFu is a consumer insights tool. Think of it as an argument ender or mm. a debate ender, right? Yeah. Or a validation tool. So this or that, or why this, or why these? What does it make sense? And you're able to drill down over 90 plus traits for your target demographic and your ICP. That's so awesome. let's say, for example, you're selling you know, um, women's supplements for women over 50. Mm. Well, we don't want to ask me and you what we're thinking about it because we're not the customer avatar on the ICP that's going to be buying from it. Mm. So you don't want my feedback because I might think the packaging looks good on it, yeah. um, but then it's not going to resonate with the buyer. So you can drill down all the way to your customer avatar mm. and there's lots of different ways to test. So one thing that we have here is a click test. So okay. it's a heat map click test. So all I did was we took a, a screenshot of the SERP, the search engine result page, for this category and said, if you're shopping on Amazon, which product would you rather buy? Click the image that resonates best for you. Right, so we got our guy right here, one, one click a -roni. Out of 15, okay. one, one click a -roni. You could see over here on the heat map, if we're seeing this here, this is six. Okay. And these are four. So six, four, three. So we're towards the tail end of actually getting clicked. Okay. So the great- A lot of room for improvement there. A hundred percent. Okay. So, the great thing about PicFu is with an open-ended kind of click test, yeah. they're saying, I like this one the most because of the color, right? So you can go over here. We're, we're talking about this one over here. So this person likes the color. Okay. Um, they're liking, it has the most baskets. So that's a common trend that we found is that three. There's three, mm -hmm. there's five, there's two. But more importantly, this one, well, actually, let's look at this one over here. Yeah. Because this one's showcasing in blue. I like the blue color more than I like red. It looks less aggressive and more fun. So okay. color psychology is actually actually a real thing. So mm. red, orange, yellow, very intense energy colors. Um, blues, purples, greens are very calming. So if that's your branding and that's your ICP, maybe go towards that. Because of the color it carries, my favorite color is blue. Well, that guy is biased. <laughs> yes, he's a guy. Because I can tell that here because it says male, oh, 25 cool. to 34, bachelor's degree, um, how much income. So you can that's actually helpful. drill down and see if you're a higher ticket item, you don't really want the opinion of someone that can't afford the product. Yeah. You want the opinion of someone that 
that has more disposable income and that kind of stuff. I love that. Vice versa, if we're selling something that's more cost effective, the guy that's doing six figures a year or whatever and driving that Tesla, maybe he's not your customer avatar, so you don't want his feedback because he might say it looks cheap or anything like mm. that. So from this click test here, it's clearly evident if we take a look at everything else that everyone likes to see. And if we go this one right here, yeah. they're talking about how showing the product being used. Uh, okay. So understanding the adjustable headbands are perfect for a party. I like to see the child wearing it. Mm. So what we gained as insight from this is that A, people like colors besides the red. Okay. B, they like more options, which mm. we may or may not be able to fix. Right. Um, but if we were the brand owner, we might rethink a three pack and maybe yeah. go with a four pack. Or I've seen listings in this niche that have like a three pack, six pack, 12 pack even. Yeah. So it could influence yeah. which one you advertise. C, three, C? I don't know, C, 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 yeah. C senor. Would be showing the product actually being in use, which is yeah. what the competition is doing. They're showing the kid with the thing on his head and how it's being used. So I think doing things like this would definitely help to improve it. We also have another way of doing these kind of polls, okay. right? So we could do open-ended polls. So again, PickFu is mm. not just a A or B. I mean, we do that all the time for thousands and thousands of people and brands, but it's not just that. Because what if you don't know? What if you don't have the B? Yeah. You just have the A, and how do we fix this? Okay. So we could take the listing right here. When looking at this page on Amazon, what more information do you need in order to make mm. this purchase? So we're now bridging from like click-through rate feedback to conversion rate. Like what's stopping someone from buying or what questions do they have? Yeah. And we can weaponize that with things that we should be including in our images or even video. Yeah. So we're going over here. I want to see information about the durability and expected lifetime of the product. Okay. We're at a price point of $13. Looks very cheap. Understand you get what you pay for. It's like mm. tattoos. Good work isn't cheap, cheap work isn't good. So if you're spending $13 on a game, understand going into it, it's probably not gonna last multiple summers, but you're gonna have fun with it anyway, and that's okay for 13 bucks, right? Okay. How to put it together. Okay, great. So when we go back mm. over here, there's no clear instructions. None. We had an interesting time putting this together. They didn't too. include actual printed instructions in here either. It no. was, it, this is pretty simple, but you know, we're. We didn't think it was so simple about 10 minutes ago. Yeah. So. And um, we're like caveman, so you gotta dumb it down for folks like us. Most definitely. Um, how much does a product weigh when full of balls? That's important for a kid, you yeah. know, if they're running around with it, if we're at a field day or carnival, which is the demographic that we're talking about, yeah. is it maybe meant for a, a a seven or eight year old and maybe not for my three year old because it's right. gonna make them topple over. How much do competing products cost? Well, that's not something we're gonna answer in a pick foo per se, mm. um, but if you go, is this product supposed to be reusable? Because it doesn't look like it would survive more mm. than one round. So again, talking about durability. So we already have two yeah. questions or insights on durability and how long it's gonna last. Yeah. Let's look at a couple more. I would like to see a fourth hoop offered as a set because an even number makes more sense. So yes. they're telling you very clearly that, okay, if it's us versus them, if it's a couple versus a couple at a party, if it's a drinking game, if it's two kids, anything like that, it's two and two. So if you guys are playing and I'm over here standing by myself, where's my person I'm going to play with, right? That so. is a weird decision to have three. And this actually brings up a good point. There's a lot of yard games out there that are unbranded and unpopular, but you stumble upon it when you're just looking for yard games for your kid's birthday party or for your own enjoyment. And so you need to educate people about what this product actually is. And that's what this listing, as well as all the other ASINs or products in this category aren't doing. Taking this in Canva, so... That's just the main image you grabbed. The main image I grabbed over here. So I always tell people best practice is showing more transparency. Hmm. So something like this, I often say don't do it. So I don't know if we want to change this, but the ball's floating in the air. Okay. Raining down typically it doesn't read well on Amazon versus if we take a look at some competition... There's no one really doing this right. Like nobody actually has an amazing listing of good photos. Like there's some that have better than us photos, but none of these are real photos. They're all lifestyle Photoshop photos. Yeah. So a couple things I want to do, and this is a also going to be a little 60 second Canva masterclass. Mm. So if I change the color in the background over here, you see there's a white box over here. This We want to take out that background. So cool. hit background remover. So let's go back to white. So now we have the background fully clear. Sweet. So one thing that people said they want to see it more up front, they liked in the PicFu polls how one was up front and up close and the okay. other two in the back. So Otherwise it may look like a trash can, which it kind of does now. Yeah. So what we want to do is a couple different things, right? So I'm going to copy and duplicate this. Cool. So I have another one of this. And then really kind of just crop out everything else. And remember, 
For all those graphic designers watching this, you're probably like, oh, I could do a better job in Photoshop. You probably could. Yeah. And I encourage you to do so if you're able to. But for the average person that doesn't know how to do this, um, this is going to help you. So you can see we're still missing some stuff over here to make it really bigger. Mm -hmm. But what you're going to do is click on this over here. I'm going to edit the background remover. So I want to yep. really take away anything that's not part of the main image in the middle. Yep. So doing this. Right? So now you're going to see that's really Perfect. crisp and clean. So I'm going to go ahead over here. I'm going to make these smaller because I want to put this one in the forefront. Right? Mm. Now I want to take this as well. So now we have the main one that we're going to put in the front right here. I'm going to put this nice and big. Right? Because we want to showcase that. Yeah. Then we're going to take this one. We're going to edit the background remover as well mm. because I want to take away the one that right. we've already used. Don't want to confuse people. Don't want to think it's four. It's not yeah. four. Otherwise, they'll leave bad reviews wondering where the fourth one is, and someone <laughs> will be sad at a party. So we got that separated. We have the three. We have the background removed. We positioned them a little bit better. Part of the PicFu data showed that we want to see people using it on the main hero image. Right. And I'm going to show you how to do that as well as add some CTR wording on it. So Perfect. I pulled an image, ta-da, from the listing itself. Cool. Hit background remover. Don't let me down Canva, and you didn't. Nice. So going over here, cropping it in a little bit like this, pulling it in like this. This is going to show you very clearly about what it is, how they're going to use it. You Now you know it's not a trash can. Now yes. you know it's going on someone's head. Exactly. But I like that her hands are in the air. It's pointing uh -huh. towards the product. It's Everything is about angles. The other big thing that I would say in Canva, as you know, the product came in a Ziploc bag with no retail packaging, mm. but that's OK. In Canva, we could make that. So oh, cool. in Canva, you want to type in uh, something like white box. And always want to go to photos, not graphics. If you go to graphics, it's stylized kind of fake stuff. Right. Um, in photos, it's more realistic. So going over here, we have a box, right? Nice. So just kind of crop it in over here. Canva never lets me down. If you don't have Canva, you should get it. It's $12. What are you doing with $12 that can do better than this? <laughs> Nothing. So same thing applies. You want to remove the background. Um, now, remember, they, they, this is not the packaging, but that's right. OK. Yep. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the packaging behind the product over here. So backwards, backwards, backwards. Cool. So now we have breathing room and some real estate to put exactly what it is. Because mm. before, it was just like, guess what it is? Is it a garbage can, trash can? Is it a little mini hoop for the back of my door? What is it? Yep. So now with this being done, I'm going to go to position. I'm going to take my layer, which is that one right here. And I'm going to bring it to the front. So what's the main CTR word that you would say this is? Basketball? Yard games? Party well, game? Well, what is it like describing it? If you had to describe oh, it in okay. three or four words. Probably the, what they have, the, the head hoop game. So let's do a little bit better than that, right? Or let's, headband. Let's do, let's do this. So we're going to add a text box. I always go to, my go-to font is League Spartan, okay. because I always remember Sparta. Then you go over here, I'm going to go to Edit. And then Canva has a great tool for uppercase. So now okay. everything's in uppercase over here. This is way too small, but that's OK. Bring it over here. And now what we're doing is we're going to type exactly the CTR word so we don't have to explain to people or right. they have to guess. It'll tell it for them. So we could say something along the lines of um, head. Headband? Basketball head game? Headband basketball game, right? Mm. So now that looks perfect, right? No, it doesn't. So what we want to do is go over here and really fix the alignment. So okay. bring it over here. The goal is to make it look mm. like it's retail packaging, but understand we don't want to make it look too good. Okay. If it looks too good, then people go, oh my god, where's this magical They're box? Expect it. Yes, yeah. we don't want to do that, right? So we want to adjust the line spacing, all this kind of stuff. Now make this bigger. No, not that. Silliest of geese. <laughs> Bring this up like this. And then here's another little trick of the trade for kind of not being a Decepticon when it comes to this kind of stuff and making it look real is go yeah. to transparency. Right now it's at 100% transparency. You bring this down to between 70 to 80%. You see the difference with that? Nice. How yeah. it's like more realistic. So, headband basketball game. So, then what's another value prop that we would have on it? We could say mm. three pieces, good for or age groups. Did we yeah. say on the listing if there was a certain age group as well for this? They included both in the title, I believe. Kids and adults. So so let's say not three. OK, let's go back to this. Yeah. So we'll say, actually, let's grab a image of a basketball, because we want to reinforce that yes. it's basketball, but it's not. We want them to understand it's basketball, but it's in a different
different version. Right. Right. So we're going to go to graphics because you don't want a realistic image of a basketball. Mm. So we could do something really cool like this or like this okay. where we're putting this on the box so now people understand, okay, right this away. is a different version of playing basketball. Right. Even if you couldn't read, you, can, you now somewhat understand what this product is for. Exactly. Right. And then the same rules apply, the transparency bringing that down. And again, these fonts aren't super amazing. It looks like no frills packaging, but we're getting the point across yes. that's basketball for your head. And then what you want to do is duplicate that. And now you want to put at least one or two takeaways for it, right? Mm. So we want to put um, maybe three, three X bands. So mm. three X bands, ages eight plus. I yeah. made that up, right. for example. Yeah. But if that's your age range, you want to showcase that so people know, hey, this looks cool. My son's six. This is not for him. Don't click. Don't get a wasted ad spend on the product if you're running ads on it yeah. and really understand very clearly. So again, we're really doing the down and dirty with it over here, but understand any two to three kind of bullet points over okay. here as takeaways is something that you want to do. Put this over here. And then what we're going to do is take this and kind of group it all together. Mm. Um, so we hit group. No, we're not going to hit group. Okay, we're going to be picky today. No problem. So let's move this. All right, so we're going to do this the old-fashioned way, but the way my grandparents did this when they came to America. Okay, yeah. The, yeah. the tried and true way. <laughs> so you want to take it like this if you can't group it and grab all the individual elements, bring them up to where you want to put it. So this right here, this right here, our basketball right here, mm -hmm. and now you want to send everything to the back. So go to the layers over here, this, arrange, Send it to the back, layers, box, Let me send guess. it to the back, yep, send, it to the back. send it to the back. And I got one more. What do you think I'm going to do with it? Send it to the back. I'm sending it to the front. Oh, uh, no, I'm sending it to the back. OK. So um, oops, forward, not all the way to the back. Actually, we can't send it all the way to the back because the box would be covering. Mm, OK. So now you could see here what we have is some retail -y packaging. But if I start to move this over a little bit, right? and kind of understand where that sweet spot is, mm -hmm. you can see I'm hitting the value props of, you can read that it says headband basketball something. Mm -hmm. You can see the number, everything's covered partially, but that gives that authenticity to okay. it, right? But understand if this is the where we're, where we're putting it, you could always come back here and grab your layer for let's say 3X bands. Maybe I want to bring that down here like this to right. really focus and highlight that. Or maybe I want to take the basketball and bring this over here or something mm -hmm. like that. But doing something like this is going to increase your CTR because we took the data from PicFu that people wanted to see the product more clearly, want to see the product in use, and they didn't even ask about pack. Well, actually, they did ask about packaging, but okay. this is going to show them very clearly what they're looking at. And they won't have to guess. And to your point, I mean, this is just a down and dirty. Literally, this was live. Like John just did this right here, and you would want to perfect this a little bit more if this was what you were actually doing. But you just showed a really good example of how you can do this within what 15 minutes. We got pull results back from PicFu, and we also just edited our main image, which is going to really help out our ads if this gets a little bit more perfected. I love this. Now, what I really want to talk about just really quickly here, there's probably going to be someone that's commenting below, which I would totally understand. Is this against Amazon's terms of service? Like, what's your rebuttal to doing putting a human in the image? Is that, are they coming with the product? Why are you saying that? Why? Who said that? There was someone out there said that? Yeah, I was like, yeah. No, I'm just kidding. No. So <laughs> uh, understand that the, the rule of thumb is if you're in a category that's super locked down. So if you're in the footwear category, mm -hmm. if you're in some apparel, if you're in books, there's a lot of these tactics you can't do. Right. Okay. Um, some areas are the Wild West, like here in Texas, um, where you're able to do a lot of things. So mm -hmm. rule of thumb is take a look at what the competition is doing. Okay. If they're getting away with this, then that's a safe space for you to kind of do this as well. Mm -hmm. um, and we've shown actually a competition that's been showing. Typically, you can't show lifestyle image in the main hero product. But if you take a look at the textile embedding category, When's the last time you went to go buy a bed on Amazon or Sheets and they didn't show you a bed in a yeah. living room or in a bedroom or Sheets or actual a bed? They're going to show you all that kind of stuff. They're not going to just show you uh, Sheets standing still by themselves because it adds to the overall experience when people are shopping. So you can see over here, I mean, you have some images where it's just... That even looks like AI. That guy's eyes are super background. crazy. No, it's not even a white background, right? They got slow motion balls going through the air. This guy over here, Doing a rope. Yeah. Um, Someone showing how to actually shoot the yeah, what it's used for. Yeah. So don't don't feel again. Now, if you just div divvy from uh, the 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 norm right now and just type in sneakers. Sneakers. Yeah. Just show people you can't do that. 
You're yelling We're sneakers. Yelling. You know, sneakers. You see in the shoe category, you no can't. Caps. You cannot do this. You cannot do. Technically, you're not even supposed to show two shoes in the sneaker. It's supposed to be uh, one and only in a certain uh, angle. Um, that's woo. That's uh, anyway against TOS. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, understand if you're in this these kind of spaces, footwear, you know, jewelry, some fashion, books. This is not for you. I mean, maybe we'll do some more videos to do that, what you can actually do to kind of gain the leverage on that. But this is really for if you see competitors in your space doing it, which we see, yeah. um, take advantage of that because they're going to, if you're not. And I think there's a case to be made there that, that you're helping Amazon. This is going to increase the likelihood of a customer understanding your product, wanting to click it and wanting to buy it. So if it's helping and not hurting the customer or misleading or misguiding the customer, then I think it's safe to do. Worst case scenario, what you get told to remove it. And if you do that five times, then you may get suspended, but typically you'll get a warning. Is that right? Yeah. And but like I said, if this if you see other people doing it, and a better tell is if you mm. see other people doing it and they're advertising. Oh, okay. Because that's even more scrutiny from Amazon. So if good they're point. doing it, that's still a, a good kind of metric. But if they're doing it and they're advertising, you know it's good to go. And so we just talked about the main image. And this is all about getting more people to click your ads, especially once you start increasing your, I'm sorry, click your main image. Especially when you start getting people or your coming ads, in through or ads. Or your ads. Or your ads. Or, or, anything that someone can click on, you want to make sure it's optimized. Because yeah. if we had an image that we were running ads on, and people didn't know what it was, and they clicked mm. to see more information, to find out what it's more about, and they realize they don't want it. Your ACOS goes up, your tacos goes up, and not the delicious kind. I'm talking about the really bad, you know, total advertised cost of sale, which mm. gets expensive. And that's a good transition now. So let's talk about what we can do on this listing specifically to give you some ideas for your own listings of how we can increase conversion rate with better images. I know we talked about the obvious thing of getting rid of this stock photography and using real humans, whether you're hiring someone professionally to do that for you and they go get models, or you're able to go find some relatives that are able to come over for a barbecue one day, you slap these on, you play the game, and you actually take some photos, which stay tuned. We're gonna be, John and I are gonna be putting this on our heads and playing with it for a little bit so that we can capture some images just to show you how we would really optimize these images if Wait, this were I, our product. I have a hack for that too. Okay. Should I share it or no? No. I'm sure, yeah, okay. go ahead. Yeah. If you guys live where there's a JC Penny, do you know about the JC Penny? Oh, hack? okay. Is it like it, engagement photos? It, same engagement realm? photos, mm. family photos. If you don't have a photographer near you and you're That's smart. shy like me and you don't want to take pictures because you think it's going to come out not so good, take your product to a JC Penny's portrait studio. Okay. And JC Penny, if you don't if you don't sponsor me after seeing this, shame on you. <laughs> but take it to there and you can get unlimited photos done in a photo shoot with a green screen background. You can crop it out. You can do all that kind of fun stuff mm. for a fraction of the price of a professional photographer. Boom. Just a little hack. Just a little hack. Yeah. There's so many little hacks in this video, but that's like a, you can do that right now. You can just go to your JCPenney's if you have JCPenney's near you. But let's real quick, high level, John, what based off of findings from PicView, based on our own intuitions, maybe based on what customers are saying, which you can find just by reading the reviews, what type of images should we be putting in here? Like what specifically should we be calling out? Yeah, so you really want to talk about A, how to put it together. Okay, there's so instructional a, image. There's a video here, but I often don't click on videos, and mm. especially for something that's $13, I'm not going to click on the video. It's a last resort. It's the last thing on this carousel. Yeah, but also talk about how easy it is for you to put together. Make it very step one, step two, step three. Don't do 90 steps. Mm. God help you if you have 90 steps to put this thing together. That's already way too much. But do a simple one, two, three. Take it out, put it together, click this, have fun. Maybe the fourth step could be have fun or something like that okay. to make it easy. But definitely instructions. Instruction. Definitely talk about you know, understand who the ICP and the avatar is. So in this ICP, one, for yeah. those who don't know. Oh, uh, intended client, I don't, what does ICP stand for? Uh, yeah, well, it's just ICP, yeah. We'll, Lenny, put, we'll put the text on the screen below. We'll make Lenny look it up later. Yeah. So um, intended client proto, I don't know, anyway. Prototype? Prototype, make your prototype. Um, <laughs> but understanding who the demographic, who the avatar is, and not that movie with the blue guys. Understanding. It's a uh, intracranial pressure. Huh, that's hmm. intracranial pressure. Or no, maybe to maybe intended the ideal co customer profile. Ideal ah. customer profile, not the cranial pressure. Uh, although it might feel like intense cranial pressure if you're not selling on Amazon properly. Mm. Or I, I don't know, I can't decide, but it could also be insane clown posse. Oh, that is a popular. Yeah, that's a yeah. It's an American hip hop duo. I don't know. Hip hop. The 1980s. Yeah. There's something. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of those. Hmm. All right. But understanding who your demographic is. So right now we see just kids and kids and kids. That's great. 
I have kids. But if you don't have kids, this park is still for you because oh, yeah. you could play with your friends, like a drinking game. Yep. You can play at the beach. You could play by the pool. Yeah. So really take your product and showcase in every facet of where people can be using it. Again, looking at this listing over here, I would think, okay, this is not really for me. This is for my kids. And it's only for playing in the grass around school. But if you mm. show pictures of people using it in the pool, if you show yes. pictures of people using it in the beach or a good beach game or anything like that, and taking this to the beach, and if you lost it, it's $13, it's not the end of the world. But understand, you really want a multi-purpose where people can be using it, but also have an us versus them. Now, I know mm -hmm. it's only $13, but maybe your value prop is We've seen some competitors that are doing, you know, six hoops. Maybe, you know, we're standard at six hoops. Competition is only three or four hoops. Yeah. We have more balls. Competition has less balls. Durability, we saw, might be in a limiting factor to buying this product. Yeah, I mean, these, they feel pretty sturdy. For I mean, 13 bucks. for 13 bucks. At, even if you didn't want the game, you got 13 bucks of almost ping pong balls to play with. I don't know. But the point is like, you know, oh, someone also said about the size of the ball, right? So especially for kids, right. um, they do talk about the size of the ball here. Lenny, close your ears because we're going to talk about the metric system right now. <laughs> Understand where, where you're selling. When you're selling in the States, people don't go based on centimeters or millimeters or anything like that. So often what you find is people try to cram in a lot of information here that's not needed. Mm. So when you say 1.3 inches slash 3.5 centimeters, you're just taking all that content and making it smaller and smaller and smaller where people aren't going to be able to see it because people had this question on the PickFu poll. Mm. Whereas you omitted the centimeters and just made the 1.3 inches larger to take up that space, you're going to alleviate the, or mitigate those kind of issues. Also, like, what does that 1.3 centimeters look like? Put it in the palm of your hand. I think that would give you a better visual of 1.3 centimeters or inches in this case. 100%. And then also, you know, everything's spread out over here. So 20 balls of each color, but show the bag of balls or show mm. the balls kind of grouped together and all that kind of stuff. Um, but what they don't show is what it actually looks like. So understand, yeah. they show it kind of put together over here, but do that simple one, two, three step process. Yep. Another one, I mean, we talked about this earlier, but like, how do you play this game? And this isn't applicable for every... You just threw it around. We just, you know... Yeah, we came up with our own games. And I think how I would play it is you either put it on your head and then you try to get the ball up in there, which is... Oh, that was actually pretty easy. Or you have someone, you know, you over there, I'm trying to get in you, and well, we're like, I, I was we're playing. Throw, I was going to throw it. Oh, yeah, here, let's do it. We should probably go a little further, but. Okay, well. Oh, that's cheating. That's, can I dunk or not? You should probably lob it up. Can I dunk? Sure. No, 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 you're supposed to say oh. no, I'm oh. not going to dunk on you. I would allow it. Okay, well. There that goes. Yeah, get a better teammate first, so that would be the first roll. <laughs> Second roll, and but that, you get the idea. Like, yeah. how do you actually play this yeah. game? This is a great example of a product that isn't branded, so you have no idea. It's not like it's spike ball and there's rules to the games, uh, or rules to the game. So I think that's like how to play or ways to play would get people interested, because as we saw earlier in the keyword data, this is not a high intent searched for product. People are looking for yard games, birthday party games, and they're gonna click on a lot of different products that they have to learn what that game actually is. Yeah. And so yeah, hopefully that's applicable even for your category as well. Real quick, can we get into the body of it real quick? Or do yeah, so we're just doing, I mean, we're just talking about the main image, the secondary images, but what else? I mean, because we yeah. have A-plus content down here as yeah. well. Yeah, you gotta have a brand story module. Yeah. Okay. Um, brand story module is a place to anchor who your brand is. Um, people, you have to focus on branding. Everything is commoditized right now, so you need to focus on being a brand. But that gives you so much more elbow room or breathing room for mm. organic SEO, alt text, all that kind of stuff to put in there, which helps with your organic rank. Yeah, if you only have one product, you might think like, oh, I don't need to do a brand story module. I'm not right. really a brand. No, you are. But even if you don't feel that way, take up that space because that's all crawlable text for organic SEO alt text behind the photos for organic SEO. I think you could put up to 19 modules inside of A plus okay. uh, uh, brand story module. Put 19 pictures of kids having fun in there and make mm. them all have uh, alt text behind them with crawlable text. Use everything that Amazon gives you for your best be best interests. Like don't leave money on the table because that's how it feels like. But when we jump into the A plus content over here, yeah. The first thing I see is kids playing it, but I don't have any call out about what it is again, reinforcing what we're looking at, reinforcing who's gonna be playing it. And to be honest, I only see one kid playing it. And who is that kid throwing them at, right? We don't show the the, the head to head, you know, kind of like we were just doing right now, throwing it on top of each other's heads, that kind of yeah. stuff. This girl looks a little bored, she feels left out. So package include, typos. Typos are super important when it comes to uh, Amazon listings. So when you don't do proper proofreading and stuff like that, people think, Less of you? Is it better? I, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. It's almost like if you're a company and you email your clients with a Gmail account mm. and not okay. your own domain. I don't know. Maybe I'm biased. 
tomato, tomato. But make sure that you proofread to make sure that everything is actually buttoned up. But you can see over here, it's very grayed out, showing like a basketball uh -huh. hoop and like a fence and stuff like that. It doesn't resonate with me. So it, a lot of it is lost, where I'd rather see some of these images a lot yeah. bigger. They also duplicated a product image. If, if I'm seeing that image for the second time, I might just think they're spamming me and just keep scrolling down to the reviews yeah. and not even look at what's coming up next. Yeah, so I mean, this is a good example. I often tell people I don't like premium A-plus content, but this is a good one if you could get premium A-plus content mm. to embed a video in the middle showing how to put it together and then how to have fun afterwards. That's something I may look at if the thumbnail is nice and crisp and compelling. But even if you don't do that, that, really want to take a wider footprint of the photos and show that us versus them, mm. why we're good, show the beach, show the pool, show all that kind of stuff. This is too small to really gain my interest. And I'm trying to look and see, it, it almost looks in this image like she's beaming that blue, the red dot into that kid's head with telekinesis. Mm. Um, and Another this, way to play. This kid is kicking the ball into the head. I don't, I am not the brand owner. I would never recommend you have children kick balls at each other's heads. I was gonna see if I can get lucky with one. Ooh. Oh, almost. Mm. Um, but we're grown adults. So you really wanna showcase the whole spectrum of the demographic. So show the kids doing nicey nice, throwing in their heads. Um, show the adults like you and I playing with friends at a drinking party or a barbecue, and yeah. just show the whole spectrum and really kind of include everybody. Well, I mean, more of the images, you know, we're talking about like, how do you put it on? Is it adjustable? I think we talked about diameter as well. Hmm. So understanding, is this too big for my head? I have a pretty big head. Is this gonna fit on my head? Understanding for things that fit on your head, hat sizing. So seven and five eighths, seven and a quarter, stuff like that, right? Okay, yeah. Show a multiple variety of heads. Um, small heads through very large heads, referencing potatoes all the way to, I'm kidding, mm. no. But really wanna showcase who it's gonna fit. Is it for an adult? If it's not if it's not for adults, it's okay, but really showcase. So you wanna have in your image stack, a couple of lifestyle photos, but how to put it together, but then also, what kind of fun am I having? Like, we're not doing mm. any typography on this. So this is just like, it looks like the bulls are just raining from the sky and they're trying to catch them. You know, putting some typography on here that's saying great family fun, fun at the picnic, great for a beach day out. Really want to tap into emotions. It's $13. Sure, mm. if they don't like it, they could just throw it away. But we're, we're playing on emotions over here, family events, all that kind of cool stuff. So definitely not just having lifestyle photos by themselves, but adding typography. Now, before we actually start playing with this product to get, take some images of our of, for this listing ourselves, I want to show you one more way that you can get inspiration for images, and that's by using AI. And so, within Jungle Scout's extension, you can actually just ask AI to read through all the reviews and figure out what people are talking about. So, what are the positive reviews saying? What are the negative reviews saying? And based on that, how can you get it out in front of shoppers' fears? that may be holding them back from buying your product. And those are things that you wanna include in your images. And so for an example here, we can see that the positive comments, people obviously like to have fun with this. And specifically, they're using it at parties. Oh, classrooms, that's a new one. Actually, we didn't figure that out yet, but we could actually show that in a classroom setting. I can see a teacher using this with their, with their students in a, in a fun way. Obviously, family gatherings. Okay, so we have some settings. It's easy to use. It's great for events. But now let's think about what people are saying negatively about this product. So the poor quality, we already mm. talked about that, but that's really helping us maybe prioritize that image. Stability issues, which kind of goes in the, um, I would say product quality bucket there. Um, but then incomplete or missing parts. So maybe something that we want to get out in front of is showing everything that comes with it. I know we kind of did that a little bit here, but they never actually opened it out to show like the sticks. And maybe that is in the instructional image that you just see how many pieces are in it um, and how to put it together. So this is really helpful. We have a section here for how you can improve this product if you're trying to develop a more improved product or if you're trying to give your supplier some some direction on how you guys can improve the next inventory batch. So these are just some ideas that can help you based on customer sentiment of what you should be getting out in front of in your images. And hmm. include instructions in your product. It's not that hard. It's yeah. a piece of paper. In the packaging, absolutely. Yeah, right? I mean, they've already spent so much money on the packaging itself, right? With that, <laughs> anyway. Generic box and poly wrap. Yeah, absolutely. Well, hey, we're now going to go take some images and show you how we would actually optimize these images to get a better conversion rate on Amazon. So stay tuned and enjoy the fun.
Now based on John's really great feedback, Lenny came back and together we revamped this entire listing and we're excited to show you how we implemented all of these ideas. All right, yes, I'm back uh, and I'm excited to see what we did with the listing here. Let's do it. So the first thing I wanna get to here before going to the images is the title. Now we mentioned in John and I's conversation that they did a pretty good job with their title. However, yep. we noticed through keyword research, there were a few keywords that they didn't need to have in there and we could replace with higher search volume keywords. And so there's actually eight keywords that we took out. Two of them had no real search volume behind it and that is hoop and net. So there were actually were no searches there that would be helpful helpful for us keeping it in the title. So we took those out to create more space for other keywords. And there's a bunch of keywords actually, Lenny, that were really repetitive. Like basket mm. was used three times, game okay. was used three times, and the keywords head and party were both used two times. So by taking all those repetitive keywords out, including those two keywords with no search volume behind it, we now have a lot more room for us to add higher volume keywords like field day, which showed up in our search term report or our keyword research, Olympic games, picnic games, family reunion, and then team building games. These are all keywords that had, I believe, over 5,000 monthly searches that wow. were not included in the title. So by having that there, we're gonna be in a lot better place to organically index and rank mm. for these keywords. And then you might have noticed the last thing we did here is we actually moved the term three pack to the end of the title because we did a lot better job of displaying that this product is a three pack in the main image. So Lenny, maybe we go through our images now and show them exactly how we implemented all of John's ideas. All right, so the big thing that we did here is that we added Jake in so that people could see a face, they could see someone using the product. The other thing that we found out from the, the PicFu mm. is that people liked the color blue, but we couldn't change the, the color of our actual product. So we've got Jake wearing blue here. And then as John was kind of mocking up, we added in some packaging here to kind of like add in some more helpful information about the product. And it also gave us an opportunity to add in another splash of color. Yeah. Like if you look at the search results page, everything is all red. Whereas hopefully our main image will stand out a little bit more because we've got a little bit of blue, we've got a face, and we've also got uh, a little bit of color on the, the product packaging. Yeah, and that's gonna help a lot, but let's move on to our secondary images here that are really gonna help with conversion rate. And so what we did is we wanted to really call out the fact, as we mentioned, that this is a game for both kids and adults, and that's because it has an adjustable strap that works on both head sizes. <laughs> You'll see here that I'm uh, de-aged. Is de-ageified the right way of saying it? I was gonna say creepy kid. <laughs> it looks really creepy. We added braces and we made me a little bit smaller, and it was also an opportunity to add really what is all included here, so three pack and then how many balls are included but hopefully this gives you an idea of what you could do with real models uh, in making this component come to life. Yeah, just to kind of re-emphasize that what we're trying to achieve here is show that it's for different types of people. Yeah. It's for adults and it's also for kids. So the idea with this image is to kind of clearly show it for uh, different, yeah, different age groups and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. And with this third image here, we found that there were no competitors actually doing this, but we wanted to teach people how to play this game. As you remember, people weren't searching for head hoop basketball game. We found zero correlation to that in the keyword data. And so this is an image that I think is gonna help people really understand how to play the game. Um, and Obviously here, we're just using stick figures. I'd hope that you actually would do this with real photography. So if we had more time, if this was our product, we would certainly go take better photography here. And one thing I wanna mention is we did this very simply. If you're gonna educate people on anything, especially how to play, keep it as minimal as possible. So we only have four steps here to describe mm. how you could play this game. All right, this next image here is pretty much calling out all the insights that we gained from review analysis. So some of the things that uh, people had called out is that they felt like it was flimsy, not very durable, or that it was difficult to assemble, or that it didn't fit very well, or was sort of uncomfortable to wear. So here we really want to make f people feel uh, better and uh, maybe overcome any of those objections uh, before they buy the product and try to assure them that our product is really durable, uh, 
that it's quick and easy to put together, which we're gonna see in uh, an upcoming image, and that it's like, it's gonna fit and um, be, you know, soft, comfy design as we, we've got here. So, uh, yeah. an us versus them is always like a great kind of image, uh, but you really wanna make sure you're basing it off of real customer insights. Exactly. And for this fifth image here, again, going back to the idea of getting real photography, we just used stock photography to show the different settings where this game could be played at. And so we have the field day here, which was a keyword actually, beach, backyard, and pool. Again, I'd wanna make sure we actually have people wearing the product with real lifestyle photography and models, but hopefully you know, this gets the idea out of how easy it could be to do something like this. Exactly. All right, this image we wanted to accomplish uh, a couple of things. So one, we wanted to call out that it was a kid-friendly setup. Mm -hmm. As we saw before from Creepy Jake, that um, this is also intended for kids as well. Yeah. And so obviously as a parent, when you're buying something for your kids, you wanna make sure that it's not gonna hurt them and that it's safe for them to, safe and easy for them to set up. So they can play it without you needing to set it up for them. Exactly, or yeah. supervise them, etc. So that's one of the things that we're calling out. But then the other really big thing, of mm -hmm. course, is just, showing people very clearly how easy it is to set up. And mm. just like before, we didn't want to give them 10 steps or 20 yeah. steps, we give them four simple steps so that you can see just from the image without us saying that it is very easy to set up. So that was this image. And then this last image here, we actually took a screen grab of a video that you're gonna see coming up after this, so stay tuned for that. But this is just a very quick, it's easy to learn and play, almost like a tagline. We could be more creative with that, but this is where you can really bring branding into your product listing. And so, yeah, as you can see, we've been really consistent with our previous images with those headers in the font. Um, here, we didn't really carry that over, but hopefully you get the idea of maybe using more lifestyle photography images like this, but adding some branding component to it and maybe adding a slogan to your listing. And then the final thing that we did to this listing is we created a product video for it yeah. that could be used on the actual listing itself, but could also get used in advertising campaigns. But just before we play that, if you'd like to download your own copy of the listing optimization checklist that we used to revamp this listing, then make sure to download it for free with the link in the description below. Now, without any further ado, let's roll the video. In the wild west of family fun, legends are born. Meet the Who Kicked Head Hoop basketball game. For kids and adults, it's a showdown of skill and joy. Three sets, 40 balls, endless laughter. Yeehaw! Perfect for birthday parties and family hoedowns. Strap on your headband, take aim, and let the fun begin. Are y'all ready to hoop it up? Who Kicked Head Hoop basketball game. Bring the wild west of fun to your home. Today I have, who are you? Good day, mate. <laughs> Put another shrimp on the ball, babe. That probably killed Lenny with the headset with the sound. So. Yeah, that's right. All right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's, let's do that. 